and welcome to the 2012 Bloomberg UTV Auto Car Awards presented by HDFC Bank and powered by Tata AIG. Now it's gorgeous here at the Oxford Golf and Country Club and I'm just dying to tee off but I have loads of work still to do because I'm bank smack in the middle of the jury round. Yeah, I mean the hustle bustle has just been like relentless and if you missed out on the show last week here's a quick recap of what happened. With 23 cars on hand, the jury members had a lot of work ahead of them. They attacked the hatchbacks with gusto, the Brio and the Swift drew a lot of attention. They then worked their way up to the mid-sized saloons where it was the Werner and Rapid that seemed to battle for attention. Volkswagen's Jetta proved to be quite promising in the executive saloons and the bigger Passat also impressed. Then in the luxury spectrum, the judges had a blast. Volvo's S60 and Audi's bigger A6 were feeling a bit outsized in the company of the A7 Ford Coupe and the super luxurious A8. And BMW's massive Grand Tourer, the 650i, and Mercedes' sporty convertible, the SLK, drew a lot of attention too. Renuka wanted to tee off, but I had other plans. There's work to be done. She's got cars to test. And well, the entire jury round is still in progress. Let's see what's going on. It was time to play dirty. The big boys were ready to kick up some dirt. SUVs were all ready to go out and prove what they were capable of. Every inch an SUV, Force Motors, Force One, wasn't getting any rave reviews. not something that you should take out onto an undulating uh, dirt track. I think the uh, only thing going for it really is that body on frame chassis. It's heavy on the top, it's, 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 it's very soft in the suspension. The engine uh, uh, at times lags power in some bands. Feels very, very crude and rough. Every jury member was keen to test the homegrown XUV 500. How did it fare? The power is there, the handling is, is pretty reasonable for an SUV for such a high uh, ride vehicle. And the um, gearbox still is a little notchy, it needs, uh, needs some work on it to be a little, uh, you know, to be able to shift quickly. Uh, but overall, I must say, Congratulations to Mahindra. I think overall when you look at it as a package, it's just amazing value for money and if you're looking for something in this category, I don't think you can get better. Good amount of uh, wheel travel, good amount of suspension travel, uh, you feel quite uh, fairly secure. But I think overall, if you look what you're getting for this car, is great, you know, is uh, is fantastic. It left the jury members quite impressed. From the days of Scorpio, this vehicle is far, far superior in terms of quality finish. And not only that, the one thing I like is the color combination on this car, the interior. BMW's X1 proved to be quite out of place here. You literally take it out on the rough roads. I don't think it, it, it performs anywhere close to what it's supposed to be. I wouldn't take it much off-road. Um, I don't think it'll get stuck anywhere, but it's very soft and bottom, bottoms out a lot. But the little X1 would feel more at home on city roads. Drive it on a normal highway, even a winding road, and it really drives beautifully.
Renault's Colios was also out of sorts here, but it managed to spark a smile on the jurors' faces. It's really for city, for for you know going over bits of bad road. It's not something I would take out and go on a serious off-roading trip. So it's a bit of a mix, but fundamentally a good car. Something if you you know if you like the looks of the car and you want a soft road or this diesel, it's too light in the back. It's just too light. Should be carrying a little more weight. Looking at to the four wheel. I mean, I was using it on a four wheel drive system, but a little bit of a boat. But other than that, not bad at all. The SUV that wowed everyone was the Evo. At least the Evo, I think uh, my my you know it has the styling, it has a lot of uh, character to it, and um, I think it's the best looking SUV by far. It's just fantastic. It is if you're driving on tarmac. I mean the car is so good. Under the skin, basically, it's got Freeland underpinning, so uh, same engine. Really not very powerful. And again, this car is a bit too soft for real uh, off-roading here. But overall, um, I think the X3 is way, way beyond. But the Evoque wasn't without shortcomings either. Range Rover's Evoque is like a show car. The only problem is it's very expensive. Challenging the Evoque for top billing was BMW's X3. The all-new, more mature X3 was playing to the crowds rather well. I think this is just an amazing car. A very strong 3-litre engine or a 2-litre option as well and um, I think it's pretty well priced as well. It's amazing how flat and composed it is, you know, the power is there, the fun is there. Um, yeah, it does have that electronic power steering but I still think it's fun to drive. Gives you a lot of confidence on the off-roading and compared to the other ones which I'm driving here, definitely a very fine machine. With the SUV testing completed, the jurors were done testing all the contenders. That meant that there was only one thing left for them to do. That was to score all the contenders. It certainly wasn't going to be very easy. And there were the various categories to vote for too. While they were scoring, it was time to move the action to two wheels.